Good morning. Welcome back to our daily Bible reading. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Somerdale Church of Christ. We're in the Gospel of Luke now, chapter 13. If you want to go ahead and turn there, we'll read the Word of God together. Let's dig in. Chapter 13. There were present at the season some who told him about Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with the sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you no, but unless they repent, you all likewise perish. Or those 18 on the tower, whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will, you will all likewise perish. He also spoke to them this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And then he said to the keeper of the vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. Now, as he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, behold, there was a man, a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and couldn't in any way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, the, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. And then the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, Think of it for 18 years. Be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then he said, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It's like a mustard seed, which a man took and put in his garden, and it grew and became a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in its branches. And again, he said to what shall I like in the kingdom of God? It's like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. And he went throughout the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And then one of them said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will enter and not be able when, I, when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us, for he will answer and say to you, I don't know you. Where are you from? And then you'll begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he'll say to you, I tell you, I don't know you. Where are you from? And depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and set in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first, and first who will be last. On that very day, some Pharisees came, saying to him, Get out and depart from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you like chicks together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left desolate. And assuredly, I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 14. Now it happened as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, and they watched him closely. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent, and he took him and healed him and let him go. And then he answered them, saying, Which of you having a donkey or an ox that's fallen into a pit will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they couldn't answer him regarding these things. So he told him a parable of those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, When you're invited by anyone to a wedding feast, don't sit down at the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you uh, and him come and say to you, Give place to this man. And you begin with shame to take the lowest place. 
But when you're invited, go sit down at the lowest place so that when the man who invited you comes to you, he may say to you, friend, go up higher. And then you'll have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Then he also said to him who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask friends, your brothers, relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you'll be blessed because they can't repay you. For you cannot, you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Now, one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things. He said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask that you have me excuse. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excuse. Still another said, I've married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to the master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, but there's still room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Now the great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower doesn't set down and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after him he has laid a foundation and not able to finish. And all who will be, see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, but wasn't able to finish. Or what king going to war against another king doesn't sit down first and consider he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes with him 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends his delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt's good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for land nor the dunghill, but men to throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Chapter 15. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him, and the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. I will say to you, likewise, there'll be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, doesn't light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she's found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I've lost. Therefore I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And when he spent all, there arose a great famine in the land and began to be in want. And then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I'll arise and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be your called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your side, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing, so he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother's come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and wouldn't go in. 
Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered to his father and said, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I've never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who devoured your livelihood with harlots, you've killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you're always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Thank you so much for tuning in today to our Bible reading. Hope that you'll join us again tomorrow as we start Luke 16. Until the next time, have a blessed day.